Hello, my friends. How's it going today? Um, yeah, I have a loose plan, and so I just thought, well, I'll turn on the camera and see what happens. If you're watching this, then something happened. If you're not watching this, then, well, I don't know what to tell you. So, uh, I did this manicure of a blueberry fairy princess a couple days ago, and somebody um, on Instagram said that I should do one for every for different fruits, a fairy princess for different fruits. So I just got these plates in, um, and I did the first one with these blueberries, and I I don't know they're just really pretty, and I really really want to do the papayas like these juicy papayas, and uh, other than that I don't really have a plan. So I started pulling colors that I thought would work with this. Um, I also noticed that these are possibly guavas, pink guavas. Um, I feel like the, I just get a feeling that the flower should be white, so I pulled white. I'm thinking that the skin of papayas is kind of green. So I kind of have this like weird bad habit slash like brain exercise where I don't really look up the colors of things and I don't look up palettes and I don't look up what things look like. <laughs> like I very, very rarely like Google a reference picture. I just try to go for my memory. And that's why sometimes my stuff is a little wonky because I don't always remember colors right or I, you know, I don't always, you know, like remember how shadows should be. And so anyway, it can be to my detriment, but I guess for me, it's just sort of like, um, an exercise and I don't mind if things turn out funky. And um, anyway, so uh, that's what's going on here. So these colors look freaking identical. Oh my gosh. But this one's called papaya. So I think I'm gonna use this one. Sunrise is also looking kind of juicy. And I'm thinking maybe adding a little of this texture, like kind of like the shine of the liquid inside the fruit. Well, that's my that's my idea anyway. It would also be helpful if I had some tips to work on. Okay, uh, this might be overkill, but I'm going to also add this other orange, which is a uh, simple color Sweetie's Mango, and uh, cause just because it looks juicy. And then I also have Restless Dahlia to add to the guava. For the background, I thought about it a lot. Um, I kind of thought of doing like an ombre, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> so I pulled out Orly Vintage, um, and I just think like orange, green, they're kind of like opposites, which mean they go together. And um, yeah, I'm going with that. And on the last manicure, I added some pretty bold looking dots in the background just to kind of make it look like an abstracted version of there being blueberries in the background, like as if you were in a, um, like a blueberry orchard or whatever they call them. And so on this one, I want to do something similar and do a geometric um, element in the background. And rather than futzing around too much, I think that uh, this pattern that came on the other plate, the zigzag, I think that'll be a nice comp complement to what is going to be very sort of um, organic and I'm hoping kind of like a um, sensual sort of look. And I am, <laughs> I don't know how long I can stretch this whole like fruit princess theme because I like these really beautiful women images are kind of few and far between. So I have this one, that's the Empress. And then after that, like, I don't know, maybe this dude can be, and it doesn't have to be a guy. Maybe this person can be uh, like for the coffee, <laughs> the cocoa, or I don't know. Okay, through the magic of editing, there are now two coats of Orly Vintage on my nails here. I've got Willow stamping polish. It helps to have a stamper and all my good things. I, know, that's, uh, I found these jumbo cotton squares at Dollar General the other day. And I think, oh, oh man, maybe they suck. Dollar General, how could you 
betray me like this. Let's see. Just going to go ahead and color in pretty much all of it so I don't get those little gaps. It, those little gaps in the lines drive me crazy. I hate them so much and no matter how much I do this, I think sometimes they're just unavoidable. I mean, either that or if you know the secret, I would love to hear it. This damper is not, I think I need to de-oil it. Let's try this one. Also, this uh, lint roller, it's kind of like this plasticky material versus the other ones that I usually get that are kind of feel more like a linen material. This one sucks. It just, it doesn't pick the, it doesn't pick off the polish if it's really dry and it's maddening. So I recommend getting the normal kind, not this clear plasticky crap. Where was I? I'm gonna do this on all of the nails. And with stamping straight lines, which is something I tr usually try to avoid at all costs, uh, because it's so hard to not warp it when every other surface you're working with is curved. So the best, best I can do is to just try to go straight down. And I try to eyeball it from the bottom up so this, this is easy because so I can brace these, you know, on my thumb or whatever. Uh, but I try to line it up just sort of by looking it up and down. And that's really probably not making a lot of sense. But anyway, just go as straight down as possible. Don't ever roll it because that will mess it up completely. So just go straight down. One more. This is my thumb one, so I gotta make sure I get all the way down. I don't think I've, it depends on the stamp, I guess, but I haven't noticed a big difference uh, with, especially with straight lines, with going sort of straight down versus rolling it. My technique personally is to kind of roll it uh, I know when I very, very first started and I had kind of mixed results, as you can imagine, one thing that I noticed helped kind of refine my technique was this, it was just sort of putting it down on the side and then doing a controlled roll and then just following through with that. And I found that that gave me the cleanest pickup. So like when I was struggling with little fine details, that seemed to work. This, this isn't helping me that this has a lot of like tears in it and stuff because um, that on the fine details can definitely mess up your line work but this is fine for what I'm doing I don't, I'm not this I'm not I don't even believe in perfectionism so um, <laughs> that's not why I'm here but uh yeah just something uh, that if you're struggling with your technique, but everyone's different because everybody holds their hands different. Everyone's hands are shaped different and the way your body moves and it, you know, it's just everyone is different. So I don't think that there's like one best way to do it. I think however is natural to you is the best way to do it. But if you, that being said, if you are struggling, try that and see if it helps. So, And then I always kind of think of it as the pressure of just getting like a little kiss, you know, you just give it a little peck. And I'm gonna top coat these. Oh gosh, I really love the way this the willow looks on top of that uh, flat, kind of like semi matte uh, green on the bottom. It looks super pretty. I'm already like so impressed with myself. <laughs> I 
Black dot of doom. All right, we'll have to cover that up. Dang. Should I bust out a new bottle of the smudge for me here? It's like I have a lot of it, but I'm so stubborn. I just want to use it until it's like glue. It's like Elmer's glue. I'm like, no, it's fine. While that's drying, I can definitely get started on this lady here. I really would like, this is my stickiest stamper, so I really would like to, to use this for the very fine lines. But I don't want this crud on there. It's probably stuck inside the little, is it? See what I mean? Like, on the other ones, this just wouldn't be a problem. It's just... Oh, actually, you know what? I totally forgot I have these. I have some of these. on the maybe they're like in the stamper what is going on why is it like that i guess it has too much oil in it oh. these things do double duty oh right i need to pick an outline On the last one, I think I just decided to not overcomplicate it, and I went with a black outline. Black is, at least this black, although probably clear jelly stamper would be even better. But anyway, black is probably going to pick up uh, the best three scrapes. Man, I don't like that, but it looks okay. I don't know. I can read it. So that's okay. Just want to make sure I got a good pickup. She looks slightly wonky, but I think on the nail it is not going to be evident because I'm going to cut this kind of uh, crop those edges. So let me get rid of all this stuff. So here's why I'm going crazy with the colors. And I gotta be real careful here, because if you watch my channel, you know. Everyone's like pausing the microwave popcorn. Let's see how I'm gonna mess this up. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> almost. Almost. Alright, let me give myself some room here. This is this is usually the problem. I don't need all this right now. Well, actually, I do need it. Um, oh yeah, and I have a little bit of green. I kind of... Mm, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna do, like, the smallest amount of that. And then I kind of want to be random. A little bit. I'm wondering if I should put white in here. Uh, no. Uh, I didn't have a stamper ready. You fool. Okay. Oh, how foolish of me. That's okay. I'll try again. I think it didn't, it really didn't like the, uh, this color, I think. That seems to be the one that didn't pick up. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh, 
Let me see if I can find something glittery that's orange. But persimmon and doom. Mm. This one is more red, which I like because it's different um, from the other yellows, or oranges rather. And um, I, am, I am gonna do just a dot of white because I did that with the blueberry. And uh, okay, this needs to go away. Uh, yeah, and it looked uh, like kind of like highlights from the shadows and stuff. So I really liked how it looked. Let's see if it works on this as well because this isn't quite the same as the shape of a blueberry. I'm just gonna do like little teeny. Same as like asserting dominance over there. Sorry. Take that purchase. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this nonsense here. Hmm, I'm thinking I need to put down a white first. Yeah, I didn't do a white background on the other one. Um, but these are pretty translucent because it's the orange. Hmm, what to do? What to do indeed. Okay, put the little heat. Oopsie. Scrape that a little. Oh no, I'm doing it again. Oh no. My nuts can't see through this one. Might have to do this. Let's see what we got. I need to do three like that. This is dry now. Oh no, I didn't press record for so much of that. Oh no. Well, I'm going to be doing it again, so um, here is what it looked like, and oh my gosh, look, it's so cute and pretty. Yep. Okay, so I don't even know how much I um, missed or how much you missed, but I accidentally used this stamper and then I was stuck using it for the entirety of this layered image and so um it was maybe a little bit wonky but I do really like how it came out so I'm just going to do it again and not use that stamper this time okay all right so this really worked and I want to not use the exact same pattern in the exact same way now I'm thinking maybe the the guava just doesn't really have a place here because it didn't, the pink didn't find its way onto this nail and I don't really want to, I could do the, I could do the flowers like that though. Hmm. Yeah, let me, let me make the flowers pink. So I'm just covering this up basically. I mean, kind of looks okay like that. Mm 
working. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. I'm really happy with that. Put some sticky base on here so all of our layers can stick. Okay, so last time it was like this. So let me do it like this. Okay, I just went back and looked and I saw what happened. And <laughs> so I just, I got so, I got so derailed. Um, by Sam, uh, but I meant to put the white down first, which is what I figured out the last time, which is what I was about to do. So anyway, now I put that on there and I'm gonna have to cover it up with white and then I'm gonna have to do that again with the oranges again. But at least I can see through my stamper because actually, I don't know if that made it on video or not. Anyway, whatever. Okay. I'll go back over it again again. And believe it or not, I actually put two layers of orange, so have one invisible layer. It just has so much depth, you know? So I wanna make sure I cover all this stuff. I'm just blending it a little. I don't wanna blend it like crazy. And yeah, I know it's a lot of polish. I think if you're one of these people that tries to not waste, um, it, you inevitably kind of end up using more than if you just kind of done it right the first time. And it's just the it's just the truth that all art generates waste, material waste. That's just the truth of it. Uh, but it's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of energy. It really, it really bugs me when people say, like, oh, it's such a waste, waste of polish, or you're wasting this. You're... But if you're making something, you can't, you can't be wasting it. You're using it. If you're using it, you're not wasting it. Is it a waste of water to make pasta? You know what I'm saying? It's part of the process. And you... And your art are never a waste, ever. It exists whether you use it or not, so you might as well use it. Moving on to my layer number two. I kind of want to make this one... How did I do that? I guess it was just layered on there. Oh yeah. Get rid of all 
this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That's that's what I was picturing in my mind. I mean, that's so satisfying when it happens. Get on there. Arg. All right, all right, fine. Now I need to do my outline. I think I am going to do those flowers uh, black. I don't know. It, I, mean, I don't know. It's fine. It just, if it's more work to do that, then I'll just make them um, black, but let's, let me see what happens. Uh, where are you? No, not again. What is wrong with me? Let me see how it looks. Oh yeah, I did that because I didn't lay it right. Right, right, right. Yeah, I got so off track. I got so, so derailed. I feel like I'm starting all over, which I kind of am. Oops, being a little aggressive there. I just let to stick. Right, oh, I need to do the flowers, which I think I did. Okay, I'm going to <laughs> be indecisive even more. Uh, I'm gonna use this. I'm just trying to find like the kind of like the easiest way to do this. I think only that flower shows up anyway. I mean, right? Well, I'm that thing, I guess. That looks good to me. I like it a lot. I guess. In retrospect, I could have done things a little differently, but. Found that, and this is now. Get on there. Yeah. I'm really, really loving the decision to put that willow on top of the. Vintage. I think that looks so pretty. It really adds that kind of like metallic green. I love it. Um, now I need to color this part. I'm thinking how to kind of make her look um, like 
I try to, I kind of want to try to make it look like, you know, she and the papayas are, you know, kind of have this similar spirit. And um, I don't want to use a ton of orange. And I need to think about what color to make her skin. In the blueberry manicure, I made her skin a pale green, which made a lot of sense with the blueberries. In this one, I think I also might make it kind of like a really pale green. Mm, I don't know. Just, I mean, it's just fruity colored, right? You know, like the skin is green and the inside is, you know, delicious. So, um, and then also I want to do that little heart. What color should that be? Maybe just white. Mm, it's really going to stand out if it's white. I could do that pink right there, even though I didn't really end up using it. Um, it still kind of goes with that. Okay, this is really tiny, so I need my magnifying glass. I think I'll start with her dress and I will incorporate a little bit of white maybe. And I could also introduce a different orange at this point since it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think the skin and the hair should be green. I don't know, somehow it just reminds me of like the stem and the leaves and the skin and everything just being green. It makes sense to me in my head. So I'm making a palette here. I'm gonna try to keep them equal but separate. And then I want to make her dress sort of light to dark. So let's kind of start off with these colors here. And I, I don't want to mix them fully. I really want to keep this mixed marbly effect. I just like it. So that's why I'm doing it. This is so, so eensy weensy. Can kind of like push it back sometimes. <laughs> Make it a little darker in here. Kind of just randomly mixing it, honestly. Just making it a little bit ombre. And then I'm going to leave some gaps and stuff so that way it'll kind of mimic the the shadows and the white on, on the fabric hopefully so like under here where her hand is I might go a little darker I really like where this color is going. I'm going to add that more up here on the... I'm guessing this is like her thigh. Even more of that. Okay. 
very nice. Also gonna make her, I'm guessing this is like, I don't know, it's, it looks like a bra, but I don't think it's actually a bra. I'm gonna get her a little crown and that tangy yellow. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did this lemon chillo color for the blueberry fairy skin. And I don't know. I don't know. It just looks like a good skin color to me. I don't really shade the skin. Um, because I don't, one, I don't trust myself and two, I don't know. It's just, I think I like the con the focus to be elsewhere other than the, um, the body or the person. I don't know. Oh, I think I smudged it. Oh man. Yeah, I smudged that. Good. Hmm. I'm going to just have to take her face off and stamp on top of it again because yeah that's not salvageable i'm just gonna make her face less just to prove my point <laughs> no i want her to have a face it actually kind of bothers me it's not so much a trend anymore but when i first started nail stamping there was a big trend to have the female bodies with just the torso so like just the the like breast to the hips and the little you know v crotch thing i don't know like they never had faces or heads and i just thought uh -huh. it's not uh because i'm just not appreciating it <laughs> seemed a little dehumanizing i guess let's try that again i don't i hope there's nothing on my brush Yeah, I guess it's okay. I'm, I'm tempted to just put a brand new brush out. Okay, buddy. I'm like the world's slowest reverse stamper, I think. So uh, if you want to fast forward now, would be a good time. I'm probably not going to say much. This takes concentration. And try to avoid having that, any kind of other impurities in here on my brush and just make sure I clean it off now and then. I think I mean I guess it could be better but it'll have to do I'm not a freaking miracle worker this is extremely tiny the other one was also extremely tiny and I think there's one spot where well the hair is a little all right the hair is a little kind of but on the body and everything. Yeah, it looked good. All right, for the hair, I'm gonna do, I like to having it kind of mixed and she doesn't have a lot of it showing. I think I will also try to do sort of an ombre-ish. So I'm gonna do light to dark on the bottom. Oh yeah, but it has to be darker than that because that's her skin color, Womp. Actually, I need to introduce another. Oh, well, here, here we are. Who's on my hair? Thank you. Let's see how that looks. Ooh, kind of crazy. Cool. Yeah, it sort of has like a blue tint to it. It's 
começa. If I do want to add a little sh shading sometimes to the skin, I'll just paint it in the behind it, and sometimes it kind of will show through. But um, another thing that would be smart of me is to um, back, especially when you do skin colors, to cover them again with white. Um, where are my tips anyway? Because they're already green, I, I'm not concerned with this, but um, if you're doing like a dark color, a darker color than the skin, for sure, make sure you put, uh, you paint white on the back of it before stamping it. I think that's it. Let me get all of her hair. Oh, it looks so pretty. It looks so pretty. So I need to think about the rest of my colors. There's some ivy in the background here, which I think this is the perfect color for. And this is still wet, actually, so let me do that quickly. A little bit, I don't know. She needs this little, like, there's like a stick in the back. I'm just going to get a brown. Catnap is kind of a little orangey brown. Pretty good, pretty good. Hopefully I don't screw up her face when I stamp this on here. I'm gonna be really upset. Well, I'll be disappointed. I'll be disappointed for sure. And I need to do that, the little like border of this too, I suppose. Hmm. I'm feeling Empress vibes from this color. Well, No, this one. Also gonna do this heart. I love that she has a I love that it has the female symbol on this. Makes me happy. Yeah, yeah, that looks cute. I don't know, it kind of blends in a lot, but the shine is there. I like that. Hmm, I wonder if I should do like a black tip or something. I don't... Or I can get rid of the, the stuff on top. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, so because this is super dry, it's never gonna come off if I just start poking at it. So I probably said this before on here, but here's my little trick for isolating images or just getting them off of your stamper when they're too dry. Just wanna get some tacky not dry but not wet polish back on whatever tool you're using and then it should just pick it right up again so 
So this is a little trickier. When I'm trying to get lines off of, of an image where they're attached to, I try to push down and break the line versus trying to like push it away or something. Uh, another thing you can do is if there's something that's being stubborn, like on this, it's kind of stuck in one of these grooves here. I'm just take like a really fine tool and I'm going to just lift that extra piece and fold it over, like just hide it underneath the reverse stamping, basically. So there's some tips for how to do that. I still need to remove more of this though. And yeah, if you add too much polish or, you know, if you add like a wet polish and like, let's say you do that and now you have an extra polish, just, just wait a second and then it'll dry enough. It'll be the right um, texture or consistency or whatever. Whatever, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's much better. In fact, all this can get out of here. Scram. Ew, that was a mistake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna put that on the very bottom there. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, now I need the sticky base. And I still have one more nail as well. And now that I have remembered to put my white down first, This is just a small nail, I'm not gonna even overthink it. How are we doing here? Oh, you bastard. All right, that's okay. Okay, she needs a face. Come here, Sticky. You're the hero I need. Right, let's get a little chunk out of here. I have so much stuff on here. I take your eyebrow out. I'm not sure. Okay, this is another high risk situation, and so, um, because I don't want to put a top coat on this and then put sticky base and then put my thing on there. The easiest thing to do is just put my sticky base uh, directly on the element that I want to stick. Thusly. She looks kind of pissed, not gonna lie. Let's see. Whew. 
Phew. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Oh, I like that. And I said I was going to add a little more of that yellow on there, and I think I will. I know it's, it's really tedious, but welcome to my world. Somebody can look at it for like 0.4 seconds on Instagram. <laughs> but it matters to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that helped or hurt, but I feel like I scratched the itch. I don't think she needs anything else really. I think I'm just gonna top coat it. It's tempting to wanna like put something else up there, but I don't really know what. And I don't know, sometimes it's nice to just have some open space. You know? She needs a little breathing room. It's kinda lumpy, that's okay. <laughs> A lot of times with reverse stamping, it gets pretty lumpy, you know, just because the paint gets thick underneath there. I usually just wait overnight until it's like 2,000% dry, and then I uh, put a gel coat on top of it, and then it'll be smooth. So, yeah, it just doesn't look as good when they're all bumpy like that. So, now we need another one of these, I think. I think I like the look of this one. Oops, I screwed that pretty shallow. That's okay. Uh, that's not okay. Actually was looking at papayas in the store today and I don't live in a place where they grow naturally and so they cost like you know six dollars each or for you know for the little ones not for the big beautiful ones they're like oh come on man no well this is why that, this is actually what happened on the last one so this is fine but still very annoying um let's see anyway there's Papayas are, they're too expensive for what they are, for sure. But today I was like, well, they're really good for Sam, you know, um, and, you know, maybe once in a while, it's not that bad to, to splurge on something like that. I'm just going to really lightly, like so lightly. So I was like, okay, well, all right, yeah, I'm I'm open to the idea of buying one of these, but uh, all of them are like just about to be rotten because you know nobody buys them because they've been because they're too expensive. So I never understand why stores do this. I mean, I'm sure they have a reason. You know, I know that they do the math and stuff, but like, it seems like it would make more sense to just charge less so people actually buy them instead of charging so much that nobody wants to buy them and then they go to waste. You know, because that is kind of a waste. There's nothing artful about that. <laughs> I noticed they do that at Goodwill too. It drives me nuts. It's so like, you guys got that stuff for free. And now you're trying to like, like, if you don't know what it's worth, like, that's okay. Just price it low and move it. Like, 
Why do you want that stuff to just sit there? Cluttering up the shelf, you know? Just price it to move. You got, you have like so low overheads. Goodwill, if you're listening to me, I'm coming for you. <laughs> By the way, before anybody comes in being like, oh, Goodwill is a private company for profit. Well, they're actually, that's actually a myth. I don't know why that got started, but Goodwill is a nonprofit and they do uh, have transparency on their finances and stuff. So anyway, I don't know why that got started or whatever, but I just, even though they annoy me, I want to stick up for what's true. So if you don't want to go there, that's fine, but they're not really doing anything particularly wrong, except for not really considering what would be most beneficial for the community and for themselves. But if I was in charge, everything would be perfect. And since there's no such thing, I mean, it just, it'll never happen. <laughs> oh my God, I would never want to be in charge of this crazy place. I get up late, you know? I get up at like 9 30, 10. I'm not a world leader material. The hand pose I'm using lately doesn't really use the thumb or it's not visible, so I don't really do a lot with the thumb anymore right now. Go in and out of phases. Some uh, some thumbs I dec over decorate and they're like a focal point. That hasn't happened in a long time though. And then other times, you know, I won't even bother putting a matte coat on it because you can't even tell. <laughs> wow, okay, these came out kind of exactly how I thought they would. I kind of thought her, ex her expression looks sort of PO'd here, I don't know. I mean, I guess I would be a little PO'd if somebody smeared my face and then removed it and then cobbled it back together uh, so yeah sorry for that but I think they look awesome and tomorrow I'm gonna put a gel coat and they're gonna look even nicer actually no I'm gonna put a matte coat on them tomorrow because I've noticed that if I put um I use this matte coat the orally and I've noticed that if I put it on top of polish that's not like 100% dry, it can bubble. And with this matte coat, it's, well, with any matte coat, you don't want to miss a spot because you'll, well, you know, it looks bad. <laughs> so I don't want to go over it twice for sure. And so, you know, you end up leaving kind of a thicker coat maybe than normal, you know, like with something like a smudge free where you can kind of thin it out. You, know, you can't do that with the matte because it will reactivate this stuff and, and it can smear. So I don't know, the matte coat takes kind of a, a soft touch sometimes, at least for me. Uh, maybe I'm just heavy handed. But um, anyway, yeah, that'll be for tomorrow. And I guess y'all can just see it right now. I guess my, if my only like regret maybe is that is coloring this heart that color it seemed like a good idea at the time but it kind of just looks like she's like holding her her boob and I'm not saying that's a bad thing but it warrants a second glance so <laughs> uh, maybe that is a good thing anywho uh yeah thank you for joining me today making my papaya princess i think she's really pretty do you think i should do another one of these, another fruit fruit fairy, fruit princess. I am running out of uh, like images though. What do you, what's your opinion on this uh, medieval per man or person? Do you think I should do a Manny with this? Maybe with, maybe with the Coke. Is, this is chocolate, right? I'm pretty sure that's like chocolate pods, co cocoa, right? So maybe like that with cocoa, like, I don't know. Anyway, if you have ideas, I'd love to hear them. You know where to put them. And that's all I have to say for today. Uh, the plates that I used uh, were QL134. And this was, uh, the, this is You Pretty Go Juice 2. And this is You Pretty Go Juice 1. 
And I have so much polish here. Here's the damage after, after we're all done here. <laughs> so yeah, good times, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye.